What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks bringing you some more Go Battle League battles here in Open Great League. And in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing a team that I actually originally saw on another content creator's uh, YouTube channel, So Tactical, really talented battler, and I have always really enjoyed the type of team comps that he likes to run. It's a very similar style to uh, the teams that I enjoy running where they're pretty well-rounded and you have two Pokemon in the back uh, that help support your lead Pokemon's weak as well as having a somewhat flexible pick um, on, on the safe swap. So this team that he showcased, uh, Defense Deoxys, Wall Rain, uh, which is using the new Community Day move, Icicle Spear, and then Galvantula in the back. So the thing with Galvantula, uh, as we know, if you've been playing much Open Great League right now, it actually has a lot of positive matchups of typical things that we're seeing in the meta right now. Lots of Wall Rain, lots of Defense Deoxys, Sableye, Metacham. Galvantula really has a lot of positive matchups there. However, it is so frail. Uh, it's very, very glassy. If you've ever used Galvantula, you know that pretty much you have to give this thing shields in order for it to fully perform. And so I, I found that running Galvantula in the back is definitely like an interesting uh, choice, but you have to be very smart on how you spend your shields uh, in order for Galvantula to really be used to its full uh, potential. So we'll see some battles here. I'm around the 3200 uh, rating, which I think might still be uh, first page of the leaderboard, but uh, battles are getting tough. I definitely throw some games in uh, this uh, video for sure, but huge shout out to Tho Tactical for originally kind of um, inspiring this idea of, of Galvantula in the back. So Jellicent in the lead. Really, really bad lead for this team because Walrein kind of struggles against it. Defense Deoxys definitely struggles against it. Um, ideally, I want to get my Galvantula aligned with it, but I'm able to draw a shield with that Thunderbolt and then I'm able to make a swap into my Walrein here. Now this Jellicent is pretty much in, uh, it's getting close to being in Earthquake range. It will survive this though, but potentially I can Powder Snow down the Jellicent. They end up double shielding which means that whatever they have in the back is weak to wall rain. They actually go for a bubble beam here, which is kind of interesting. Um, but this means that this next earthquake is not going to knock them out. So kind of an interesting play. It allows them to farm more energy. This was actually a CMP tie. I tried to get into my galve there to farm this down. I'm not going to get hexed down. I'm going to swap into my galve and in the back is a Nido Queen. Makes sense why they stayed in with Jellicent because they are weak to wall rain in the back. Nido Queen really does a good job of shutting down Galvantula, unfortunately. Even with this shield advantage I have. Uh, it's just really not going to matter. I still have that Jellicent to deal with, and I don't know what their third Pokemon is yet. It's going to be very difficult to farm this thing down. I need to try to get as much Powder Snow damage as possible, because I definitely cannot counter this down. I'm going to force the Nidoqueen to dump its energy here, and then try to go for a farm down with my Wall Rain here. We simultaneous faint, and now I'm stuck with my Deoxys. In comes their Jellicent once again. And the unfortunate thing about Psycho Boost is that you drop your attack, but I really did not want to have to shield. And in the back is a freaking Bastiodon. Uh, the thing is that Jellicent could have just bubble beamed me and I would have had the same outcome here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised that they didn't end up bringing their Bastiodon on my wall rain. But knowing that they were already down a shield, uh, that's definitely more threatening for them, the Earthquake being threatening there. Another really bad lead for my Deoxys. Have to go into the wall rain here. I'm using wall rain as the safe swap here just because this moveset gives it such wide coverage. Um, having ice and ground type moves really allows you to hit for neutral, uh, if not super effective, on a lot of really good matchups. And anytime like a fighter is swapped in onto wall rain, it really brings their health down pretty low and they can't farm too much energy off of you. So I've, I've been enjoying using wall rain as a safe swap here. My particular wall rain, uh, I actually have a couple wall rain. Uh, I've really only fully built one, and it's this one. You can see the IV spread on the screen, 0158. It misses the attack breakpoint against the Azumarill matchup, and it's very, very noticeable in some of these matchups. Uh, my Powder Snow is not doing as much damage as it would if I had a slightly higher attack IV. 
We get some beautiful lag here, and I really need to get some energy off on this Cafagrigus. So I'm going to throw a Psycho Boost I have back to back. I land that one, and I'm able to throw another Psycho Boost here. Wondering if they're going to shield. They actually end up shielding, and so I'm going to snipe it down with the energy that I have banked on Wall Rain. What do they have in the back? My DD is essentially uh, useless at this point. They bring in the Azumarill. So I'm hoping that my Galvantula can sweep whatever they have in the back. And whatever they had in the back was definitely weak to Galvantula because they did not want that matchup to occur. Good game. Okay, Charm Alolan Ninetales. Uh, pretty tough. The thing with this team that I'm running is that uh, you're essentially double weak to Bastiodon. Uh, and you're really weak to like a G-Fisk in the back if your Galv is, is stuck there. And people that run Alola Ninetales, they typically, um, there's a, <laughs> oftentimes there's a Steel type in the back. And so, big mistake on my part here is staying in way too long. There's the Metacham, and almost for certain there's either a G-Fisk or a Bastiodon in the back. It's a really common team of Charm Alola Ninetales. Metacham and Bastiodon, which this particular team definitely struggles with. Um, potentially, you could throw a Psycho Boost immediately with DD and then make a swap into the Wall Rain. Um, but if you let your DD get too low, uh, you're going to see it's just not going to be able to perform in the back end against those Steel types if your health is too low. You really need more health for that counter damage to be able to take effect. And there it is Bastiodon. Really unfortunate to see, it absolutely demolishes this poor spider, and this game is super over. Definitely could have top lefted uh, here to save some time. I don't know why I'm playing this out. Why am I playing this out? <laughs> okay, there we go, yeah. Good game. Cannot be that team comp. Okay, G-Fisk. This matchup is always really awkward for Defense Deoxys, and I am so bad about calling when they're gonna bait here. In my mindset, Defense Deoxys is really bulky, so I'm assuming that my opponent is gonna go for the, nu uh, the nuke, assuming that I'm not gonna shield, and I've been incorrect uh, a majority of the time. So I threw Psycho Boost potentially a little bit early. I maybe should have even thrown Thunderbolt on the first move because I'm already down a shield and now I'm going to get hit by the big move. This is so bad. <laughs> this, this is a, a really bad way to play out this DD G-Fisk matchup. But I obviously need to get rid of this G-Fisk so I don't have to see it with my, uh, my Galv. But I lose lead and I lose shield advantage. What the heck? So I'm gonna bring out my Galvantula, hoping that it can sweep whatever's in the back. They bring out Trevenant. This is really not that great for me because I'm only hitting neutral with this lunge damage. They're probably gonna swap to clear their debuff, but I swap at the same time. It's a charm Alola Ninetales, double shielded charmer. Really, really bad for me. I'm gonna go for this uh, Icicle Spear bait. But unfortunately, there's pretty much no win con at this point. I was able to successfully bait, but I don't think I'm going to have enough energy to get to um, an Earthquake. So I'm just going to go for this Earthquake regardless. I'm not going to bait. And it ends up getting shielded. Unfortunate. Looking at the energy now and watching this back, if I would have baited there, it looks like I actually would have been able to get to that Earthquake. However, I believe the Alola Ninetales would have still survived. Good game. Okay, Wall Rain lead. This is good for me. They swap in their own Deoxys, and this is where things get awkward because Galvantula does not do great in its like neutral matchups when you are behind energy. Because I for sure am gonna have to leave this matchup with a shield deficit. I've already seen Wall Rain though, so potentially Galvantula will have some play um, against that if they end up bringing that back in. Gonna go straight for the lunge here, debuff this. Deoxys going to get hit by another move before they get out of here. That's fine. I have loaded energy coming out of here. I'm really hoping that they don't punish this energy with like a Bastiodon or a G-Fisk. Okay, Trevenant, totally fine. So this is kind of a prime example of Galvantula having play against all three of their Pokemon. They swap to catch a lunge on Walrein. Totally fine by me. It's just going to debuff it and still do a good chunk of damage. I can bring in my Deoxys, just going to throw the Thunderbolt here. Don't want to drop my attack, I really want the boosted damage of these counters. They let it go, 
and they have two shields and a trevenant that's hanging on for dear life here just gonna throw these psycho boosts um, but this game is for sure over i'm just gonna be able to powder snow it down with my own wall rain they go for seed bomb to save some energy um, but this is just gonna be fast move beat down with the powder snow and they resign good game galv had a lot of play there Okay, Lickitung in the lead. Kind of another awkward neutral matchup here. We're both hitting each other for super effective damage. Now, people that lead Lickitung are weak to fighters. So there's uh, potentially a chance that there's not a G Fisk or Bastion in the back. I still make the swap in a wall rain though, um, because I just want to mix things up and try to set my DD up for a farm down scenario. And you can see how good wall rain is in this matchup against uh, this Sir Fetched. I'm gonna let this Leaf Blade go, but there is a case to be made. I could have shielded there to win Switch. I didn't feel like Switch was that valuable though. So I bring out my DD, farm it down, out comes the Lickitung again, I'm just going to throw another Psycho Boost, and hopefully my Switch Clock is up and I can get out of here. It is. Going to go into my Galve, and I'm hoping that Double Shielded Galve with an Energy Advantage can sweep whatever's in the back. They're going to be able to get to one final Body Slam here, unfortunate. I do want to shield this, potentially this is going to be the thing that does the most damage. It's a Meta Cham in the back, so I need to immediately throw these Lunges as soon as possible and hope that after being double debuffed, the Psychic won't knock out Galv, but Galv, as we know, is very, very glassy. I land both of the lunges there. Discharge does do slightly more damage in these neutral scenarios, but I need the debuffed attack as quickly as possible. I do survive the Psychic, no problem. Really good for me. Able to get another lunge, and then I'm gonna be able to farm down that Lickitung Tongue and take that game there. Good game. DD into Skarm. Uh, so my team is kind of uh, triple good against Skarmory. I still make this swap into Wall Rain though, uh, to potentially bait out um, another steel like a G Fisk or a Bastiodon. They do sneak a counter through. Gonna throw one Icicle Spear and then try to get to another one. This is going to set my Deoxys up for uh, a decent farm down, and then I'll have energy to threaten the Skarmory. Now the issue is here, Skarmory leads and then paired with Scrafty, I've seen a number of different team comps. Sometimes it's um, a Vigoroth in the back. Sometimes it's like another fighter in the back. Sometimes it's a Nidoqueen in the back. I have seen that variation before. This particular team, uh, they're actually staying in with the Skarmory here. I go for a lunge here, which is a really stupid play on my part. Um, but I just wanted to drop that attack, and I, I really want to try to be able to farm this down. It is a Vigoroth, so this is one of the more common team comps that I've seen. Uh, Skarm lead, and then double counter users in the back. But these body slams are really going to chunk. Have to shield that up. And I'm going to get outpaced to this next move. Really not good for me. And this body slam is going to KO. So I bring back in my Deoxys, I throw the Psycho Boost, and they let that go. I really need to be able to farm down this Vigoroth. They're able to get to another Body Slam though, not good for me. I need to land a Thunderbolt on that Skarmory. They bring it in, I'm going to go for the Psycho Boost bait, and even though my attack has been dropped by four stages now, we're able to get to that Thunderbolt, and this should be just enough to take out the Skarmory. Can I counter down the Vigoroth? That game was so, so close. Good game. This battle's up against Onion Frank, who is well known for running fast move beatdown teams. And this is a prime example here of him running uh, the Grass Hole team of Bastiodon and then double Razor Leafer. He's also well known for running the, the Charm A9 Metacham Bastiodon team. Uh, pretty, pretty frustrating teams to play against, but he really makes them work. Because uh, he's always very uh, highly rated on the GBL leaderboard. So I had a favorable lead with DD into Bastiodon. Uh, this Bastiodon is going to get a pretty big farm off of my Galv. I'm just going for the debuffs here. So that way, uh, if he does want to throw energy onto my DD, it won't do nearly as much damage. 
but I make a huge mistake here. It's Tropius and I should have swapped sooner and I should be throwing immediately, but I allow him to get to a move. I got too greedy. Now I have to shield this and now he can easily save his shield uh, for his Bastiodon. He's gonna be able to farm me down and then essentially have a hundred energy coming out of this. And I'm just not going to be able to do enough fast move damage to this Bastiodon to take it out. So well played by him for sure. Um, An unfortunate mistake on my part. Just uh, not throwing my energy soon enough against that Razor Leaf Tropius. And DD just not able to clutch it against that Bastiodon in the back. Potentially if this was a Metacham, it'd be a different story. Uh, you'd be hitting for stab, super effective damage and resisting the Smackdowns, but good game there. Magnazone, Shadow Magnazone in the lead, holy cow. Good lead for me. Out comes Pelipper and this is a really solid response to the Pelipper. However, if they deny your Volt Switch like this, uh, this matchup gets a little bit scary. Because if I don't throw energy right here, they're going to get to another weather ball. So I just go straight for the lunge. I get a shield and then they're going to hit me with the weather ball. That's fine. Most likely they're going to bring out that Magna zone again and try to farm me down. But Galv is going to output so much damage against this Magna zone, despite uh, the lunges being resisted. The Magna zone is really trying to farm me down, but Galv gets to another move. And this was actually a CMP tie. Galvantula won CMP there, which is crazy. So they no bubble it to farm me down even more, which is a smart play. But in the back is the Sableye. All I need to do is get to two Icicle Spears here and we'll be able to clutch up uh, this game, no problem. Gonna shield up this first move. They go for their win condition, which is landing a return. So, so props to my opponent for committing to the win con there. Uh, they're never going to get to two moves. And uh, good game there. I think one more uh, battle in the video here. Mandibuzz lead, not great, but I do have two better responses uh, to it. So I swap into Wall Rain, and they're staying in. Really interesting. So I'm going to throw some energy and desync our switch clocks a little bit if they want to swap. I'm thinking that Wall Rain's going to have play against whatever they have in the back, but I can easily take a foul play. Okay, they bring in a G-Fisk. So I'm going to bait with an Icicle Spear here, but I need to get this G-Fisk low enough that my Deoxys can hang with it. They no-shield that. Really unfortunate. If I would have went for Earthquake, that would have been really great. The best part of this is that I know that my Galvantula gets to avoid this G-Fisk. So now I'm thinking that Galv is going to have two positive matchups in the back. There's already a Mandibuzz floating around that Galv's going to have a uh, good matchup with. Hopefully we can find something in the back that Galv also has play. I do shield up the big move of Earthquake. So I'm very healthy. Out comes the Mandibuzz. These Thunderbolts are still going to hit for a good chunk of damage there. And they actually um, swap into Politoed and Galvantula is going to have a lot of play. Snuck a Volt Switch there. Really lucky for me. But I can just go straight lunge here and do as much damage as possible. And then we will be able to clean this up. We still have some energy stored on Deoxys. We're still very healthy. We easily survive this debuffed Weather Ball. And these Volt Switches are doing a lot of damage. Might barely survive this Weather Ball as well. No, it's just enough to take it out, but we're going to be able to farm this all the way down and then have energy for that Mandibuzz and take this game. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciate the content, and I'll catch you all in the next video.